Okay, in this video, we're going to look at the thoughts, uh, or look at the relationship between the stroke volume and the pump activity, which of course is heart rate. So while stroke volume is not going to cause, directly cause heart rate to go up or down, the stroke volume is going to affect um, what the heart does because we're trying to conserve cardiac output. So in other words, your, your relationship was that cardiac output is equal to stroke volume multiplied by the heart rate. So we know that heart rate influences cardiac output and stroke volume influences cardiac output. Um, what we haven't applied yet is this idea that together we, we consider both of these and their influence on cardiac output, that if cardiac output is to remain constant, well, well, then stroke volume will, when it's changed, will have some influence on the heart rate. So in other words, if I want to keep cardiac output a constant at, you know, five liters, then if stroke volume goes up, well, then heart rate would come down because of the relationship that heart rate times stroke volume equals cardiac output. So it, it's, it's giving you, again, the PhysioX is giving you a chance to apply um, or change what's going on in the heart without actually testing an animal or setting up experiments, but is hopefully kind of instilling this, you know, what's the cause and effect of heart function. All right, so this, these screens look pretty much the same as the screens you use for activity one for the overview as they would be because the overall exercise is devoted to cardiovascular dynamics. All right, your objectives this time have changed though to understand the effect to understand the effect a change in venous return has on stroke volume, okay? So again, this is really stating some of your, your hypotheses for these experiments, right? And so venous return is more blood coming back, and we know from lecture that if more blood comes back, more blood can leave, right? To explain how stroke volume is changed in the heart, well, a lot of that is changed by contractility and afterload, all right? But, um, Again, that's, that's what you're, you're trying to reinforce in this exercise. The Frank Starling Law of the Heart, I said you didn't have to know this specifically, but this does address that. And it's a very straightforward law that if more blood comes back to the heart, then more blood can leave the heart. Right? That's so, again, remembering that stroke volume is the blood leaving. Preload, contractility, and afterload, these are, again, the variables that affect stroke volume. And you want to distinguish between intrinsic and extrinsic control of the heart. So intrinsic, that, that the heart which itself is doing, like the stretching of the myocytes. And extrinsic would be something like the sympathetic nervous system or a hormone like thyroxine. Right? And then to explore how heart rate and stroke volume contribute to cardiac output and blood flow. And this is one you, you will directly be looking at. So the objectives are really important in this exercise to come back to and say, okay, Here's what I was supposed to be looking at. Did I actually get that? Um, the introduction should look a little bit different. If I can, there we go through that. Because it's addressing specifically these relationships. So the, the introductions are very good because they're reinforcing the concepts we looked at in our lecture. All right. And so if you have the time, it's nice to sit down and read you know, these and, and look at them carefully and think again about what we've already said uh, about the relationship of stroke volume to preload and afterload and contractility, right? And so it goes through and it, it talks about the stretch on the heart here with the length tension relationship. Mm -hmm. The afterload is that back pressure in the aorta or the pulmonary artery if we're looking at the right side. And what cardiac output is, which again, cardiac output is pretty much the flow. Now at the very end of the introduction, it explains what you're actually supposed to represent in this simulation. So again, here, these are important to look at. The left beaker is blood coming from the lungs, all right? Uh, flow tube connecting left beaker to pump simulates the pulmonary veins, right, which would bring it back to the left atrium. The pump is the left ventricle, right? And we've got a valve to the left, which is bicuspid, a valve to the right, which is aortic. The flow tube connecting the pump and the right beaker simulates the aorta, and the right beaker is blood going into systemic circulation. All right, so you can do a pre-lab quiz. Again, which of the following variables contrib directly contributes to preload? Preload, gosh. 
All right, well, venous return is going to be the most important thing, really, to preload. Is how much blood are we getting back? All right. Which of the following would not increase end diastolic volume? All right. So exercise would because it would be squeezing the veins a little bit. They'd get some sympathetic and they'd, they'd squeeze, which would force more blood back. Um, a slow heart rate would because you'd have more time for diastole. Um, increased venous return is really the same as both of these. Dehydration would not. All right. Increased contractility of the heart results in all, but which of the following? So if we have increased, we have more force from the heart, we of course are increasing more blood leaving, right? So increased contractility would increase the force of contraction. They're all, the, they're basically the same thing. And because we know stroke volume is going up, we know that cardiac output is going up. So increased end systolic volume does not make sense because that would mean that more blood would stay in the heart. So these two cannot increase together. They will always be opposite. All right, which of the following does not affect stroke volume? All right, so all of these affect stroke volume, really, preload. And then which of the following is not equivalent to the others? So cardiac output is the same thing as flow, and we measure that as, right, total blood flow per minute, so these are the same. Heart rate times stroke volume gives us cardiac output, so it would have to be in diastolic. All right, so we submit that. And hopefully it works. Right, and here's our setup, right? Blood coming back from the lungs, going to the heart, and then out to the body. Okay? So pulmonary veins, aorta. So you can now study the effect of stroke volume on pump activity. The other variables maintained are constant, right? So again, we want to make sure we're looking at just one cause and effect and not all the other things that can change in the heart. So, right, pulmonary pressure. Pump pressure, systolic, right? Looks about right. Right blood pressure, maybe a little low for systemic. This is, again, pulmonary is always low, but systemic might be about 90, but that's fine. It's assimilation. Um, maximum strokes right now are at 10. Left and right are 3. So, again, we're not looking at radius as affecting this, so these are set at 3. All right? Okay, so we're good. Now, note that the starting pump volume, EDV, so that's the... the how much we have returned is set to 120. Set the stroke volume to 10, right, so this one goes down to 10, by increasing the end pump volume, or ESV. So if we see how those change, I said they can't, they're not going to change together. So there we go. Now click auto pump. All right, and record that data. So our flow is supposed to be constant, radius, left and right radius, so aorta, and pulmonary veins constant. Stroke volume is only 10 milliliters leaving. And so we have <laughs> 500 strokes. That's crazy, isn't it? All right, we need to refill. There it is. If the pump rate is analogous to the heart rate, what do you think will happen to the rate when you increase stroke volume? Well, if I increase stroke volume, then heart rate could decrease. So the pump rate will decrease to maintain cardiac output. Okay, so again, I'm making stroke volume higher so the pump can actually pump less frequently. And we don't care about venous return, so really the pump rate will decrease. All right, submit. Increase it by 20 by decreasing that. There we go. Why did this change? And again, stroke volume equals, e no, that's wrong. ESV must be greater than ADV. No, those two are absolutely wrong. The heart intrinsically alters stroke volume to accommodate changes in preload. We'll go with that one. All right, auto pump. There we are. <laughs> Can I have to look around myself here? All right, record the data. And sure enough, when my stroke volume increased, the rate decreased. Refill. The effect of incremental increase of stroke volume by 10 by decreasing the end pump volume, or ESV. Click auto pump, record, refill. So now we're going to increase it by 10 each time by decreasing this. All right, auto pump. Yeah, look at that pump slowing down. Record, refill, All right, down to 80. And we have to get it down to increase the stroke volume by 10. Auto pump. Slowing, slowing, 
board, refill, right? 70 auto pump. We're not quite in a normal heart rate, are we yet? <laughs> but you notice it is, like I said, as your stroke volume goes up, your heart rate is going down while your flow is being held constant. All right? And auto pump. Record, refill. All right. The flow has stayed constant with each child because cardiac output is equivalent to blood flow. Yep, it is. Stroke volume is equivalent. No, the inside is changing. That's absolutely wrong. We don't care about those. So, all right. Increase the stroke volume by 20 by decreasing the end systolic volume, end systolic volume, and click auto pump. Right. So increase the stroke volume by 20 by decreasing. Click auto pump. Bum, 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 bum. Record, refill. All right, how does the heart provide for an increase in stroke volume? Not by increasing afterload. It can by increasing contractility. That's really it. All right. It, how does it provide for an increase? It doesn't increase heart rate. We've realized that now, all right? And decreasing preload wouldn't make sense. All righty. Increase the stoke volume by 20 by decreasing the end volume again. All right, click auto pump. And again, what you're seeing is that as that stroke volume goes up, the heart rate can go down because what we're after is a constant flow. And this, of course, is the advantage. Oops, record data there. See, we're down to only 51 beats per minute. All right, plot the data. Yeah, so we kept a constant flow by altering that. All right, click Submit to record the results. All right, and so here's our post quiz, which you go through. What do you think would happen when stroke volume is decreased? All right, so if stroke volume is decreased, pump rate would have to increase, right? Why might an athlete's resting heart rate be lower than an average person? Okay, so venous return has increased, stroke volume has increased, contractility has increased, stroke volume and contractility really have increased, and that means the heart can decrease. In this activity, which is volume stayed constant, all right, it wasn't the pump rate, it wasn't stroke volume, so flow rate, okay? And which of the following is true? So we know that end diastolic volume has to be the highest, so this is the only relationship that shows that because this one implies end diastolic volume or excuse me stroke volume is the highest right and this one implies that end systolic is the highest and, and that would as well so end diastolic minus stroke volume equals all right so then it goes through and like I said you can you can do you can look at the questions to see if you can answer them and they'll bring back up your specific predict questions, but you're not answer these for me, all right? Mm -hmm. This is just something that you would want to know or, or try to help you understand and write up your report. Your report is really about writing a hypothesis, stating the things that did not change, right? Um, including your evidence here through the table and the graph if necessary, and then speculating on what the whole thing meant. So I hope this helps, and uh, please come with any questions.